Hello and welcome to the next section of our video course on data structures and algorithms in Rust. During this section we are going to be looking at sorting and algorithm complexity. And in this video we are going to be looking at a very simple kind of sort known as a bubble sort. This time to create our project instead of just typing cargo new and the name of our project we're going to try cargo new dash dash lib and this will create a library project for us. It doesn't do much differently instead of creating a main file it creates a lib file and it puts slightly different things in the cargo.toml. And you'll see that our code starts with a test instead of with a main function. We'll run that test a little bit later. For now though let's just start by writing a pub fun bubble sort and this will take a type t which will be orderable that means it has a, a comparison operator works on it. Our main parameter for this function will be a mutable slice of type t so the square brackets say it's a slice that's just a list and it's going to be mutable and we'll call that v. So what we're going to do is we're going to loop through the entire list and in fact we're going to loop through the list inside a loop through the list. For underscore underscore means we don't need to know what the variable is we're not going to use it and that's zero in naught to the length of the list. And inside this loop, we are going to run multiple passes. So we need another for loop. This for loop for i in naught to v.len. So we're just going to go through the list multiple times. And each time, if v at i, this is the square bracket, say at location, so it's a list, and that list starts with zero, we're always just comparing two elements next to each other. v at i v at i plus 1. And then if the earlier one is bigger than the later one, we need to swap them. Now normally of course to swap you need a third variable, but it's it's quite helpful in Rust to use the swap method. So now let's move to our test. So we'll just create a test vec. So we'll let v equal vec and that's an exclamation mark which says this is actually a macro. What this macro will become is let v equal vec colon colon new, followed by vec dot push four, vec dot push six, vec dot push one. But we can just write it like this to save ourselves a bit of work. And then we want to sort this list. So of course we need to use what is in the module above this. So a quick talk about modules in Rust. You can either make a module in a new file just by giving it the file name and bringing it in by writing mod and then the name of that file. So if it was tests.rs, I'd write mod tests and then a semicolon and that would say Rust look for the file. Or you can actually use a squiggly brace and inside that squiggly brace is that module. Both are perfectly usable and inside a module you can use its parent modules properties by using super colon colon and whatever property you want to use. And in this case I'm using a star which means use everything. The hash cfg test says this is a test module don't include it in normal code running and the hash test says this is a test so we'll call bubble sort on our vector and we need to send a mutable pointer to it just like we said we would in the function signature which of course means that v needs to be mutable we need to be able to change v and then we're going to compare the resulting vector v with another vector which is sorted correctly so that would be 1, 3, 4, 6, 8, 11, and 13 in that order. So now inside the root of our project folder, we can write cargo test, and it will run everything that's inside the config test that's called by hash test. And here we go, the test has passed. So assert equal is basically a macro that will panic if the two things are not equal. A macro is just something that kind of becomes other code. If we run this by saying the right should be something different, we can see how the test fails and what kind of information it will print out. So here you see we have the left is the actual resulting array and the right is what we said it should be. In this case, what we said it should be is wrong. So we'll fix that and carry on. And this is a bubble sort. But there are several tricks to make it more efficient. The first thing to note is that, so for every element in this slice, we are looping through the slice again. So that means for every element in the slice, we are checking every other element in the slice. And so that means we are actually gonna need 
n squared operation. If the array is 10 big, it's going to take 100 checks. If the array is 1000 big, it's going to take a million checks. And we can definitely do better than that. There are some savings we can make. First, let's add this check to say whether this is sorted. If we run through the entire list and find it's, it was already sorted and we made no changes, we might as well finish there. So if it is sorted, then we can return. That means that if the array is sorted at the beginning, this will just be completed in a single pass, which saves us a lot of effort on pre-sorted arrays. That sometimes happens. But also, if it's close to sorted, things will kind of move to the right place, and this can finish early. But its worst case scenario is still n squared times. If you imagine how this is operating, if vi is bigger than vi plus 1, it's going to move forward. So at the end of the first pass, we actually know something. I'll let you think about what that is for a second. What we know is that the last element in the array is the biggest element in the list. Just check with yourself and see if you can follow that one through, but that is definitely true, and I will show you in a second. However many times we've gone through this list, we can actually do one less element. So actually, if we um, count p in the first for loop and take that p away from the second for loop, we know that those elements are actually going to be OK anyway, so we don't need to worry about them. Now, actually, the saving for this, it's pretty big, but it's not as big as you might think. It, it basically means that if you've got a list of 100 elements, the first one will be a, it'll do a 100 pass, a 99 pass, a 98 pass, and then a 97 pass. So that's still a lot of passes through the array. And actually, adding together all of the numbers up to a number is pretty close to n squared over 2. And so I want to talk about the expected runtime complexity. And in that case, that is still n squared. And so I'm going to call this thing big O, that's its run complexity. This is the common notation among computer scientists. Big O is the complexity. And when you're checking for the complexity, it's not an accurate exact number. It's more the kind of complexity. Because as a number gets really big, anything of lower complexity feels smaller. So if I have n squared plus 500, Sure, as long as n is below 500, the n is still vaguely relevant. But by the time your numbers are, at, are in the thousands or hundreds of thousands, the plus n is irrelevant and only the n squared matters. So when you're writing big O notation, you always take biggest, most growing fastest of the parts of this function. So in this case, it's n squared. Ignore the over 2. It's not important. The big O for a bubble sort is n squared. So I also want to kind of show you how the bubble sort does its sorting. So we're going to make the requirement of debug in our code as well. So we're going to use standard fumped debug. This is part of the standard library. It provides a mechanism for printing out the contents of any array or any type, actually. So once we've got that and we say that our T type must also implement debug, well, slice implements debug if its internal type implements debug. So now we can print out what our vector is. So we use print line. Again, this is a macro. Don't worry too much about macros. I'm not going to cover it in much detail in this course. Think of it like a function that really becomes other code. And inside this print line, open bracket quotes, you have to describe how you want it to print the contents. And in this case, colon question mark says use its debug method to print it. And we'll print out v. And that way, so every time we do a pass, we're going to print out the result of the pass. And if it's sorted, then it will return. Again, I'm going to make it error so that we actually get the printed result. And then you see it starts with them out of order. And after the first pass, 13 is at the top. After the second pass, 11 is the next one from the top. After the next pass, 8 is the next one from the pass. And so the ends become more sorted as does the bottom, but the top is the one that's guaranteed to. And another trick that sometimes people use when making a bubble sort work is the first pass goes forwards, the second pass goes backwards. I'll let you work out how to implement that yourselves for a bonus challenge. 